I don't think there's any debate in the scientific community that the way we're using our natural resources is impacting our climate. Electricity prices by 2050 meant to double. What we have now is basically the same sort of electricity system in, in its structure and its form as we had 100 years ago. So you could call it a dumb grid. The largest single contributor to rising prices at the moment is an ageing infrastructure. We can always solve the problem by building more power stations, building bigger wires. But this is a very expensive process and maybe there are more intelligent ways to spend that money. We've got very inefficient power stations, coal-fired power stations, uh, less than 30% efficiency, and then we lose another 9 or 10% in the transmission to the cities. So it's not a very smart system at all in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, in terms of peak demand, in terms of providing customer choice. We want to turn all those things around. With the introduction of large numbers of air conditioners and some quite power-hungry appliances like plasma TVs, this multiplication of appliances is beginning to present a real problem. You know, we are heading towards a tipping point on the current grid where we will start to have more and more failures and more and more problems if we don't do something about it. Questions are being asked about how Sydney CBD could come to a virtual standstill following a blackout during peak period last night. I think there's definitely a people-driven movement that's anticipating and promoting change in the electricity system. Essentially, the smart grid is a union between energy, information technology and telecommunications. And a smart grid, of course, is the glue that holds all that together. Yeah, I think the smart grid will be part of a revolutionary change in the way we deliver energy. If we consider the fact that every device on the smart grid, which would include all the appliances in your home, all the assets you see on the poles and wires, if they are all centrally connected to each other, and we have databases of information and can manage and predict what's going to happen on the network, that gives us intelligence that we currently don't have to date. By putting some interface with the customers, the householders, in a way that can help the grid be more efficient and effective. And above all, to try and reduce the environmental impact uh, of the entire production of electricity. The smart grid has the ability to allow two-way flow of energy. They might even be able to send electricity back into the grid and get the um, energy companies to pay them. Our newer, cleaner energy, typically, which is solar and wind for us in Australia, will be distributed where the wind blows and where the sun shines. So what I'm very passionate about is uh, seeing a lot of energy being generated from solar panels right on people's houses, generating right where they're using it. So this lets customers take ownership of the way they manage electricity and the way they source it. You know, so we'll actually start to leverage one another to provide the grid. It won't perhaps be such a monopoly anymore. Some people can be self-sufficient or relatively self-sufficient in energy terms. One of the key technologies that we're working on right now is the GE Smart Meter. Users will be able to get information from this meter like they never had before. They can use that information to help them better use energy. Being able to see your energy consumption on your iPhone or on your Blackberry. So for instance, the meter might say to the freezer, hey, now is not a good time to enter your defrost cycle. There's not much power on the network, so why don't you wait until a little bit later? That sort of ability to, for the home to self-manage itself almost is where, what we can sort of be looking forward to um, as part of the smart grid and intelligent homes. To support electric vehicles on a national scale, if we're talking millions of vehicles, then the current framework to provide electricity needs to change. Clever technologies can be used to manage the charging of vehicles so it occurs in the small hours of the morning when demand is already low. We actually have the opportunity to use the vehicles and use the storage as a means of providing power back into the grid because without a smart grid you can't make all those technologies work together. There is a demonstration project that's taking place in Newcastle. It's the Smart Grid Smart City program. Newcastle is still the single largest coal export site in Australia. It's uh, probably quite appropriate, I think, that Newcastle becomes a place where we could actually see the new generation uh, of energy technologies, new generation of energy systems, which will actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We could, in Australia, be the cutting edge for research in these areas. 
there's not that many opportunities in your career that you get to be deeply involved in that sort of change. We cannot take our eye off the ball in terms of this is the most important new industry that the world will see.